Hello and welcome to Fuel Cells 101. This is Professor Larry Pitts. I am the Director of Design at Plug Power, where we design and manufacture hydrogen fuel cells for just about anything that moves or needs electricity. Today, like a lot of you, I'm home. I'm home working and learning because science, technology, energy, and learning cannot stop. So let's dig into our presentation. There's a few things that you're gonna to need today. The first being a paper and pencil or a pen because we're gonna have a quiz and I want you to take a few notes. So get ready for that. The second thing that we're gonna need is a love for science. It's something that I have and everybody that I work with has. You gotta love science if you're doing something cool like this. And the third thing is an imagination for innovation. Fuel cells are something that not a lot of people know about. They're not something that you don't see out all over the place right now. And when things are new, when things don't exist, you need your imagination to make them work. So we spend our days coming up with new ways to apply this awesome science because in all reality, fuel cells, they solve a lot of the world's problems. I mentioned that quiz. So here we go. We're gonna call this the Fuel Cell 101 Trivia Challenge. The first question we're gonna ask you at the end is, Fuel cells use what to create electricity? We're also gonna ask you about hydrogen. Is it the lightest or heaviest element? What can you run on fuel cell power? And what is the only waste created by a fuel cell electric vehicle? And then the last question is a true or false question. Fuel cells can power drones today. Are there drones flying around the skies that are powered by hydrogen fuel cells? Okay, next we're gonna dig into the basics. There's probably two questions that you're asking right now. First, what is a fuel cell? And the second one, what is hydrogen fuel? Let's start out with a little bit of a history lesson starting in 1766 when Henry Cavendish discovered hydrogen. If you've ever seen a periodic table before, you know he deserves a number one for that. Next. In 1839, William Grove invented the world's first fuel cell. Then, a little over 100 years later, General Electric invented something called the PEM fuel cell. PEM stands for proton exchange membrane. That's the kind of fuel cells that we like to make. Then things get very interesting. The history of hydrogen and space travel actually predates the founding of NASA itself. In 1957, almost a full year before NASA was established, the Air Force was hard at work studying an exhaustive proposal for the development of a new space booster powered by hydrogen. The proposal aimed to give the U.S. the ability to place heavy payloads in orbit in the shortest amount of time possible, in hopes of avoiding decades of continuous research and development. The result was the Centaur Upper Stage Rocket, otherwise known as America's workhorse in space. The Centaur rocket would go on to play a key role in enabling the U.S. to surpass the Soviet Union in the Cold War space race. And the rest is history because fuel cells were used throughout the Apollo space missions all through the 60s. After that, in 1990, the 1990s, that's when you started to see fuel cells show up in products or commercial applications. It's around the time that I started working at Plug Power. And now, in 2020, there are millions of fuel cells used around the world today to create clean energy. Now you might be asking yourself, what is a fuel cell? Well, a fuel cell is an electrochemical power generator. Let's talk about that word electrochemical because that's a pretty big word. What that means is that we don't burn anything to get the electricity. Instead, we use the special properties of a chemical process to get the electricity. Inside the fuel cell is a special membrane that looks a lot like a thin piece of cardboard, and we painted that membrane with a coating called a catalyst. Just like a piece of cardboard, it has two sides. On one side, we feed it hydrogen. On the other side, we send oxygen using the air around us. The catalyst lets us borrow part of the hydrogen called the electron to make electricity. Hydrogen is also the most abundant and lightest element in the universe. It's colorless odorless, and has no taste, and what we like to call the Iron Man of the environmentally friendly fuels. Hydrogen is often called H2. H2 is a diatomic molecule, meaning it has two protons and two electrons.
see by this diagram how a fuel cell works. It provides electricity as long as hydrogen fuel and oxygen from the air, the air that you and I breathe, are available. They're much more efficient than fuel combustion, and fuel cells come in many different sizes. The size is determined by the requirement of the thing that it will power, and we'll, do, we'll get into more about that later. There are five different types of fuel cells. Hem fuel cells, which we are a big fan of, alkaline, phosphoric acid, molten carbonate, and solid oxide. Hydrogen. Hydrogen, although it's the most abundant element in the universe, does not exist alone in nature. We have to borrow it from some other rich hydrogen rich molecules and then store it. Technologies that help us do this are reformers and electrolyzers. Okay, next let's talk about where fuel cells are used today. Did you know there are over 30,000 forklifts powered by hydrogen fuel cells? That might not seem like a big deal to you, but if you like to order things online or go to these giant department stores or really big grocery stores, there's a very good chance those products were moved by a hydrogen fuel cell. Why? Well, those warehouses, they stay open all the time. They work seven days a week, 24 hours a day, and they do not stop. They don't have time to plug in and charge a battery. And fuel cells, they can charge while they're moving. So that's a perfect application for, for, for moving things to your house. So, Things like Nike sneakers and Xbox, toilet paper, which there's a lot of toilet paper being sold these days, paint, bananas, Coca-Cola, all of those things likely are moved by hydrogen fuel cells. And if you think fuel cells moving a forklift are really cool, check out our video game at plugpower.com. Another application that fuel cells work great in are delivery vehicles. They're used all around the world to power and move things to get them to your house, from those warehouses to your house or from business to business. The reason this works so well is a typical electric battery operated vehicle can go twice as far powered by fuel cells because fuel cells are much lighter and the power density is much higher. Eighteen degrees. It's actually warmed up quite a bit. What, what was the temperature when you when you left for work this morning? It was negative thirteen this morning. Yeah, it's about right. Same here. So, well, hey, the truck is working too. Our truck has been driving around for the last year. We commissioned it at the end of January. It's been riding around upstate New York, slushy, salty, slimy, and hot weather in the summertime. Driving around, delivering packages for the last year on hydrogen power. Another great application for hydrogen fuel cells is cell tower backup. Everybody has a cell phone these days and it's got to operate all the time. There are times when the power has gone out but your, your cell phone keeps working and that might be because of a hydrogen fuel cell. Fuel cells, they go up on top of a mountain next to a, fuel, next to a, a cell tower and they do a really good job of backing things up if, if the power goes out. And they work a lot better than the batteries sitting up on top of that mountain. Hopefully you have your pen and paper ready because I mentioned earlier something about drones. Drones help farmers, search and rescue, rescue crews, doctors, and the military to do their jobs. Why do fuel cells work so well with drones? Well, because they're lighter than batteries and they can go twice as far. They can go much further than batteries. They are being used today. There are hydrogen powered drones flying around our skies. When you talk about drones, it's easy to vision, envision a clean energy future. And we think that that clean energy future is going to involve a lot of hydrogen fuel cells. So let's talk about some of the applications that we think that that's going to happen.
fuel cells give a greater range for inner city moving around, com commutes. Uh, we think that first that's gonna happen with a pilot. Uh, we, we look at taxis and different companies that drive people around. Eventually that's gonna be going up in the air. We think that at first it'll start out with pilots and as uh, um, acceptance of that grows, we are going to probably end up moving to autonomous drones flying people around. So there's a very, very good uh, um, vision of that going on right now. So hopefully that happens. We think that th that works because fuel cells keep the weight lower, that extends the distances that they can be traveled, and also hydrogen fuel cells fill up very quickly as compared to charging. So those drones or air taxis can be up in the air much longer, much quicker. We think that, there are like, that the, the regulatory approval for this will be in the mid-2020s. Let's talk about on-road vehicles, down on the ground again. Combining the benefits of fuel cells on, in electric vehicles, we think the self-driving vehicles are gonna be a big part of our future also, and fuel cells will be a big part of all of that. There's a high asset utilization and longer range with zero emission performance. We think that that also is going to be happening in about mid-2020s. Let's talk about homes. They're already being used to power homes in some parts of the world. Japan has already installed more than 300,000 fuel cells as part of its Enafarm program. In 2009, that program started as Panasonic launched the world's first residential fuel cell called Enafarm. In Japan, it generates electricity and heat using hydrogen extracted from the city's natural gas supply. The company is now expanding its fuel cell business abroad to seven countries in Europe including Germany and the United Kingdom. We think this is gonna to continue to spread around the world. So far, we've spent a lot of time talking about how fuel cells are used, where they're used, and how we benefit industrial, but we haven't spent much time talking about uh, what good they do to our planet or why they're important to our planet. You see, there is still a lot of power being created using, I guess what I'd call old energies, uh, fossil fuels, which are really uh, things in the earth that are leftover dinosaur remains or wastes or whatever. So that gets burned and in the form of petroleum or gasoline or diesel. And that ends up in our air, in our, on our planet. But there is a movement now to electrify things. Electric motors are clean. There's no emission coming out of them. And actually, one of the founding fathers of electricity, Thomas Edison once said, dinosaur turds, they're not gonna last forever. Actually, Thomas Edison didn't really say that, I just made that up, but uh, it's true. Dinosaur turds will not last forever, so we have to find a better way to get our energy. And why not use the most abundant element in the entire universe, especially if it's clean energy? So what I would like to do is show you a slide that I think is really cool. This here is a aerial view of the city of Beijing, China. And this is probably taken late 2019. And you can see that view from space, looking down in, uh, on Beijing, it's not exactly clear. There is a lot of stuff in the air, whether you call it smoke, smog, uh, industrial waste, whatever it is, it's obvious that this is not clear. And this is probably normal for, for that city. And there are a lot of other cities in, in, Amer in, in the world that are, that are like this. But I wanna show you something that happened late in 2019, early 2020, when the coronavirus hit, everything changed. Industry started to shut down because people were sick and they had to stop the pandemic. People stopped driving in cars. This is that same aerial view earlier this year. And that is incredible to see the progress that can happen when those internal combustion engines are not polluting our air. So this right here is a vision of what can happen with clean energy when that stuff is not going up into the air, when the only exhaust or waste is water and air. This could make a huge difference for our planet. Do you agree? Uh, but the way that, the way that uh, weather is, is very unpredictable, climate change and everything else included, we, we really cannot predict when storms or tornadoes or hurricanes are gonna come through. And with hydrogen fuel cells, we have a lot less of what looks like a grid because that power is distributed. 
So when a storm comes through, there will be a lot less damage because that hydrogen, that hydrogen power can be localized as compared to being transferred across heavy lines. So hydrogen fuel cells being zero emission, they improve air quality by reducing greenhouse gas emissions. Hydrogen fuel reduces CO2 particulates and NOx emissions, which is a lot better than a lot of the internal combustion engines that we have. And you will have the ability to stay up and running when natural disasters or peak powers during summer or even fires happen. So next, let's talk about jobs. There are an awful lot of jobs that are created with hydrogen fuel cells. I work with all kinds of different people and um, there are people like me who are engineers, there are scientists, robotics people. Not only people who figure out how the robots work, but also the code, the, the software that, that runs that, that ro the robots. Uh, there's business people. There are people who are out selling fuel cells to all of these big companies that, that, we, that we see using them. There's manufacturing techs and so many more people. There's service techs. Pretty much any industry that you know of right now that is in the technical field, whether it's the automotive world or electronics, those jobs can pretty easily transfer over into hydrogen fuel cells. So it is definitely a technology of the future. All right, we're coming around the bend here to the end, and that means it's trivia challenge answer time. Okay, so hopefully you have all of your answers ready. Let's go to the question number one. Fuel cells use what to create electricity? Is it water or is it hydrogen and oxygen? Hopefully you said hydrogen and oxygen because that is the answer. In a fuel cell, hydrogen and oxygen are combined to generate electricity, heat, and water. All right, next question. Hydrogen is the lightest element or the heaviest element? Which one is it? Well, hopefully you know that hydrogen's atomic weight is one, which would make it the lightest element. Remember, it's the Iron Man of the environmentally friendly fuel world, like I mentioned before. It's got a lot of punch for its little weight. Next question. I can run on fuel cell power, cell phone towers, electric cars, trucks that move Nike sneakers, delivery vehicles, airport tuggers, all kinds of stuff, which is all of the above. Hydrogen fuel cells used in both the private and public sectors for all of these and much more. Material handling, food, commerce, e-commerce, retail distribution, stationary power, telecommunications, data centers and utilities, vehicles, including delivery vans and passenger cars. The only waste created by a fuel cell vehicle is, is it oxygen? No, it's heat and water. Fuel cells are clean electric vehicles. Their only tailpipe emission is water, making them zero emission vehicles. And that is clean water. I've seen people drink it. All right, the last question. True or false? Fuel cells can power drones today. Are there drones up in the sky powered by hydrogen fuel cells today? The answer is yes. Drones can fly longer distances when they use fuel cell as power. So hopefully you have enjoyed this time together because I certainly have. And I just want to thank you for joining us. Hopefully you've learned some cool stuff that piqued your interest with hydrogen, fuel cells, clean energy, and everything else that we talked about. It's been a great time. And thank you. Thank you for joining us. See you later.